Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Today is Jubilate Sunday, the third Sunday of Easter. The name Jubilate comes from Psalm 66.1. Rejoice, Jubilate, in the Lord all ye lands. We continue celebrating Easter for another few weeks. Then comes Pentecost, Trinity, and then the greening season of growth in Christ. Our order of worship today, Divine Service 3, page 184. The Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth keep silence before him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We pause for self-examination. We continue. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray the collect of the day. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have awakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls each of us by name, and follow where he leads. Through the same, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Our first reading for Jubilati Sunday, from Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. Revelation 7, 9 through 17. And this is also our sermon text for the day. John writes, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and round the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading from John chapter 10, verses 22 to 30. John 10, 22 to 30. At that time, 
the feast of dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe, because you are not part of my flock. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Grace, peace, and mercy to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we again are in the throne room of heaven, and it's a place of worship, delight, and incredible joy, as in keeping with our theme of the day, Jubilati Sunday, Rejoice in the Lord Sunday, based on Psalm 66.1. Shout for joy, Jubilati, to God all the earth. Even in times of suffering, persecution, tribulation of many kinds, which is what the background behind this revelation to John is, we have reason to rejoice because Jesus wins. And just look what Jesus has won. People for himself, without numbers, says, as we read from Revelation 7, 9 to 17, no single person is missing. There is a completed number. All are accounted for and present. They are a great multitude that no one could number. And we look again. More and more details begin to pop out at us. These folks are from every nation, all tribes and peoples and languages. Ethnicity, the skin color, the geography, nor political state 
are a barrier to those who are there in Christ Jesus. And then look at what they're doing. Firstly, they're standing before the throne in the Lamb. They're clothed in white robes. They are holding palm branches. They, forth, they are crying out, salvation belongs to God who sits on the throne of the Lamb. It is a rejoicing cry that comes from them. This, this is a bit like the Palm Sunday event that we celebrated four-ish weeks ago. Palm Sunday was a prototype, a practice run for what is here fulfilled. Palm branches, shouts of salvation, hosannas have been completed by Jesus' work on the cross and with his resurrection. These same words are also found in our communion liturgy as we join them. These, the martyrs, the people of Revelation, in communion, Sunday upon Sunday, when we gather at his altar and he comes to us and we sing Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Their song with branches. Now in heaven, where this is all taking place, everyone there is awed by what has been done. There is the uncountable number of angels, they're awed. The 24 elders are awed. The four fearsome creatures are all awed. They all fall down in respect, faces to the ground, and they worship and they sing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to God forever and ever. Amen. There are bookends of amen, amen to this song that they sing. They sing about the truth and trustworthiness of what Jesus has done. Jesus, the precious Lamb of God, has won. Jesus wins. But then something shifts, and we go a little deeper. An elder asks old St. John, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? John does not know. Uh, this then becomes a teaching moment. The elder is about to give the answer, but the attention of the one listening is drawn to and focused on what will be shared so that that listening believer will take note and time to think deeply about the answer that is coming. The answer. These ones are coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Narrowly, specifically, these are martyr witnesses who have suffered persecution. And they are there, precious before the throne of the Lamb of God. More broadly, these are all those who have lived as believers in a sinful world and those trials and tribulations too. Now, a while back, a friend, Dr. Munt, wrote the following for a trip he was leading to Asia Minor, Turkey, to visit a number of the churches of Revelation. The devotions he had for that trip, well, they reflected on Revelation itself, and he wrote the following. We know these are believers because only the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. John 1.7. 1 John 1.7. The same applies to us. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways, ways inherited from your fathers, not with perishable things such as silver or, or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. Through him you have confidence in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. This from 1 Peter chapter 1. Now, we have this confidence in God. These are his promises that we too are washed by the blood of the Lamb. But um, Fred thing, having spent a lot of time working in a butcher shop going through university and school, I never saw blood ever cleanse anything and make it white. But here it has happened. A sacrifice, blood, has erased, purified that which was sinful, erased an unpayable debt, 
and set someone guilty like me, like you, free. You see, Jesus wins, and he wins you. In addition, these faithful ones, and you can start counting yourself in the number, please, have a great reward. Their life is now one of worship, serving day and night, not as slavery, but a life of joy, rejoicing the jubilati style of our day. These rejoicing, worshiping ones with white robes are well cared for. And we'll even read about banquets and feasts to come. But here it says, they are sheltered, we read. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst no more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. This is a fulfillment of what King David sang in Psalm 121. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Or think back to the Beatitudes of all the blessed be fulfilled statements which are now fulfilled for those who mourn and those who grieve, for those who hunger. Consider even then Jesus' words to those who are amazed that they're in heaven when he says to them, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. How they, these others, how they treated others in Jesus' name is exactly now how Jesus welcomes and treats them. How they have been persecuted, persecuted, tormented, or suffered has now been paid back many times more with good and justice, beauty and awe. Wonderful. It is wonderful. As they had served, they are now served by the Lamb who is in their midst and will always guide them as their shepherd to springs of living water and wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here is a shepherd that knows how to lead, has living water, he being the font and source of it himself, and who comforts the brokenhearted, who takes them up and binds them up in his hands and cares for them, who wipes away the tear from the eye of those who grieve, and hears the scream of pain and the sob and heave of the breast for those who mourn and suffer. We have a great shepherd, the Lamb of God himself, who has won eternity. Here there is joy and satisfaction and peace with the precious blood of Lamb Jesus Christ. He has won a victory over death over sin on the cross, and he's defeated death itself. What he has won is something to look forward to. Uh, then no wonder some people look forward to paradise and the resurrection. Now the bad news is that there will be persecutions and suffering going on through life of various types. It is a difficult mix. I'm sorry, but he walks with us there. Who will we see there as we go a little side from the sermon? We will see the martyrs from the, on the sand of Tunisia. We will meet the martyrs of the earlier church, having left old St. John behind. We will meet those who have given up their lives for Christ, those who have shared their lives in Christ with others without reward, those who have suffered physically because of the breakdown of our deed of our physical beings, of nature itself those who have been cheated in Christ, for Christ's sake, and other things as well. In Bible study, we can look at these things, look at the martyrs, and yeah, we can kind of hold them up as heroes, someone who gives us encouragement as an example, and realizing, look what God has given them many times more. For what we see praised here is not the deeds of saints, but we see the deed of the Lamb of God on their behalf. The focus 
is him. We in this life are encouraged to fight the good fight, to, res to resist sin and the lure of a flashy world which is powerful, but yet is cruel with a hate we might want to avoid at all costs, even the cost of our souls, because it could lure us away into another default position, philosophy way of life. We could be in danger of losing all this that St. John sees and records and shares with us. As a point of law and warning, what did Jesus once say? What should it profit a man that he gained the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? There is a sting. There is a sting. On the other hand, what the Lord offers us with the end is good, very good, his declaration. Until that final day, we do, as one person just wrote, exactly what the text describes. Say thank you loud and long for all eternity with the martyrs there at heaven. The text image of where we are heading is very clear. And we look forward to it, even while singing and praising. We also look around, understanding that there are others to add to the number. That would be including us here in Vancouver. This is a mission imperative because through us, you, me, the church that we are, God seeks others to wash white in baptism and set on the path of Revelation chapter 7. This is where Christ is leading us as individuals, as a church, in mission and ministry because he is our good shepherd and we may trust him. Remember the Amen, Amen of the song? And of this, he will remind old St. John and each of us so that we are encouraged and given continued confidence and hope in our walk to that day of our own resurrection, our own eternal life, singing and praising God and being fed and clothed with righteousness and purity. True bliss, that's what it is. See, dear friends, the, the end is good without measure. And John received a glimpse of it, which he shares with us. Jesus wins, and you win, and overcome too with him. And wow, did he say it once in John 16? I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Jesus wins. He has won it for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, dear family and friends, we're so glad you joined us today for worship. No matter where you might find yourself, whether you're at home or traveling, you know what's going on. Uh, we thank again St. Peter's Estonian Congregation for the permission to film here in their beautiful church our services week by week. God blessings to you, our dear Estonian family and friends as well. On Sundays, we are the guests of Killarney Lutheran at 49th and Kerr. We worship there with them, 10 a.m. English and then 11.15 and Cantonese. We are guests of Killarney Lutheran in person, 10 a.m. English, 11.15 in Cantonese. If you'd like some more information about our parish, you can reach us through the website, and there you'll find the email. Just click it, and we will get back to you with information about our outdoor events, Bible studies, different things going on, Sunday school. Glad to talk with you and take you for a cup of coffee, too. And finally, Sunday is also Mother's Day. And on this day, we thank our Lord for all the various women in our lives. Our mums, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, great-greats, our wives, our sisters, our aunties, our daughters, and our nieces. We are thankful to God for each and every one of you. Whether you are a mum or not, you are a gift to us. The Lord's blessing to you. 
Dear friends, we continue then with prayer. Heavenly Father, in your name your Son purchased us with his own most holy blood, and he now leads us through the gate of death to our eternal home with you. As a sheep of his fold, inspire us to hear his voice gladly and to follow him steadfastly through every tribulation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, shepherd of souls, your servant Paul entrusted his flock to the care of faithful men, urging them to follow him in the ways of Christ. Bless your church here today, in this city, in this region, under the care of her pastors, and instill in them all wisdom, fortitude, humility, and grace. Bless those then that lead us in worship. Watch over us and take care of, yes, our leadership in the church and also the parishes of this Vancouver region. Bless in Robert Mons, our regional pastor for Alberta and BC from the Lutheran Church Canada. Reverend Chang of Killarney Lutheran. Martin Luther Church and Reverend Schmidt. St. Peter's Estonian with Reverend Rebane. St. Mark's with Reverend Sturschel. Dunbar Lutheran with Reverend Keeley. Savior of the Nations with Reverends Courtright and Wang. St. Matthias and St. Luke with Reverend Wu and his good team. Holy Trinity with Reverend Prizwala, especially as he soon leaves for Sydney, Australia. St. Margaret of Scotland on Galliano and Reverend Tweedale. Calvary Lutheran Thunder Bay, which is vacant, and Zion Lutheran Prince George and Vanderhoof Lutheran, who are also vacant actually for two and a half years now. And also our Bethlehem family, as we contemplate our mission and ministry with you, O Lord, in Vancouver. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you have provided us with the gift of family. Bless those who have shown us a mother's love and nurtured our lives from childhood. Protect all mothers with child and those who have suffered miscarriage or the death of a child and all those who have yearned for a child and lived with the pain of unfulfilled longing. But, O oh Lord, we give you thanks for all the women in our lives, mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, and for some of us still, great-great-grandmamas. Thank you for our aunties, our wives, our sisters, our daughters, and our nieces. No matter their state with childhood or not, we give you thanks for you, O oh Lord God the Father, have mothered us and nurtured us through Jesus Christ, your Son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have not forgotten us in our afflictions or abandoned us in our weakness. Deliver the sick and suffering according to will and give your comfort to the dying, especially to those who have requested our prayers. Guard us against despair and grant us patience in the days of trouble as we wait your perfect healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate Lord, you will not allow any power or enemy to triumph over your saving purpose or snatch your lambs from your hand. Give us then wise and faithful leader, leaders who will govern our, Canada, our land Canada, our dominion, according to your law, and defend the unborn, the orphan, the widow, the aged, the helpless. Bless all those who admit, make, administer, and judge our laws that they may not hinder your purpose. Grant us also, Lord, peace. Consider the plight of the Ukrainians in this time of invasion. Consider also the invaders from Russia and bring peace, for you are the great peacemaker. As we pray for them, O Lord, teach us in kind how to support them also. Bless Elizabeth, our queen, all of you given the sword and grant us indeed peace. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. All this we ask in your name, Jesus Christ, your, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, O Lord. Teach us always to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon each of you and give you his peace. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Happy Jubilati Sunday, everyone. Thank you.